I get asked a lot, should we merge your own pull requests? Well, not really, but also yes. So the answer is no, but the answer is also yes. So let me explain why. Sometimes you're the only maintainer on the project. And if that's the case, still raise a pull request and share it with your friend or in the community you belong to. And hopefully someone else can at least give it a quick once over. And that fresh pair of eyes really helps. But if you don't get any kind of you know feedback, like I haven't got in this pull request, you can see there's been no comment, then sleep on it. Don't merge it straight away. As you can see, it's two days ago, gives people time to review it, but also gives me time to look at it again. So I can go look at the files changed and I can make sure that I am happy with all these changes. I've done that before this video, so we're all good. I didn't wanna bore you with it. As the project grows, you can get maintainers on the project or other contributors who can review pull requests. They don't have to be maintainers. They can still review pull requests. They just can't hit that merge button. But I'm actually gonna merge my own pull request in this video. And I do recommend using as much automation as possible. As you can see here, we've got seven checks. So we check that the project builds. We check that the automated tests pass and the various other ones. Another thing you can do is you can deploy it to a test environment that's identical to the production environment. Maybe even the same data. That's what I've done here. So I've got two tabs open here. On the left I have, you can see it is linkfree.edihub.io forward slash edichild. This is my profile, but let me go back to the homepage because this pull request is about the homepage. And this is what it looks like right now. So you can see we've got 444 users, 21,000.1 profile reviews. And if I switch to the other tab here, which is beta.linkfree.edihub.io, you can see the numbers are the same. Or oh, actually, I think, yeah, they're the same. Whew just checking. And you can see the numbers do add up. We've got some more information on here because we're pulling out more information from the database. But this is deployed to beta and it's actually connecting to the real database. Definitely do more checks before you get to this stage. But I'm pretty confident. I know no one has reviewed it, but I'm pretty confident that this looks okay. One thing I've noticed, this footer is right at the bottom and it's not in beta. So uh, the main branch has moved forward further, but it should work it out all okay. Another thing I recommend is squashing your pull request. The reason for this, if something goes wrong, then it's really easy to pull that commit out. You can actually do a git revert and use the git hash. So the git hashes here are actually gonna change. So these two will get merged into one and we'll get a new hash. So when we do that, you'll see that in, oh, let's do that now, let's just see it together. That's probably a lot easier. So I'm pretty confident, let's squash it. I'm gonna give it a better commit message than this. We're gonna say it's a feature and we're gonna say homepage statistics. Let's go and let's hope it works. I'm gonna delete the branch because the branches are like ephemeral, they're temporary. So now I've merged it and if I, Refresh the page, it should say merge. If we go back to the home page of the repo, the landing page repo, you see main, you can see now we've got a new hash. And if we go to commit, you'll see just one has gone in for the home page statistics. Beta is going to stay the same, but eventually it's going to be deployed and it's a feature. So it's going to jump up the version. It's going to go from 1.23 to 1.24.0. And we can check that by going to actions actually. And we can see, you can see it is building and deploying this version. So version 1.24.0 should appear up here when it is deployed. Hopefully it works and then hopefully everything's good and we're happy, but do try and do as much checking before, especially if there are people using your project when it's deployed because it's nothing frustrating, right? You don't want people to lose trust in your project. And it's really hard to grow trust for your project and for the deployed version of your project. And it's really quick and easy to lose that trust. So do the best that you can, but things go wrong. And if you can roll forward, then that's fine. But sometimes you do need to either roll back or undo a commit. Like I said, with this hash, the hash here, we would do on the command line, git revert and that hash, and it will make a new commit. So it will trigger all the GitHub actions and everything that you have set for deployments, et cetera, releases, but it will do the inverse of that commit. So basically it will undo it, but with a new step. So the history will show two new commits, one of the, the code being changed kind of going in, and then the opposite is another commit. And that's really, really useful because then if you ever wanna practice with it on a branch, maybe bring that feature back in, you can revert the revert, and then all that comes back again, and then you can kind of tweak it and find out what was wrong with it rather than you trying to copy and paste stuff. So let's have a look at GitHub Actions. Let's see how we're doing, it's still going. 
So I'll keep quiet for a moment. Okay, now it's complete, finally. It was quite a long build, not sure why. But you'll notice there's another build. When you weren't looking, while I was waiting for this build to finish, I merged one of my other pull requests that was also kind of a day old, and it was a small improvement that I thought was low risk. So now if we head over to beta and I refresh it, nothing has changed. But now if I come over to the production one that everyone else in the world is using and refresh it, you can see now it looks like beta, so it has been deployed, and the footer is now stuck to the bottom, so the features that were in main and that were newer are still there, but then it's also got the additional ones from the pull request. But it looks like it worked okay. So if I go to my profile, it looks good, it works. I can go to search, I can go to popular. It's all working quite well. Okay, we've got no community events at the moment, but I need to add some, add yours as well. Great way to get some green squares. So I think that's a wrap. So if you can, just to conclude, don't merge your own pull request, but if you need to, try and get someone to look over it, but also use a lot of automation, write automated tests. We have automated tests that run every GitHub action. It doesn't cover every scenario yet. We're working on it and we need your help to do that. Another great way to get green squares, but we have it doing the most popular things, like for example, search checking someone's profile works, making sure that the main features work, because if those don't work, then you really don't want to deploy it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe below so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. I'll see you in the Eddie Hub Discord where we geek out between live streams and videos.